Hey, welcome, Homegrown Radio, NJ.org, to the scene with Lauren and Danny. Hello. And Donna. Hi. And Kevin. <laughs> Full house today. We've been pretty busy uh, over here at, at the station on this blustery day, but we are excited. Um, actually, it was a surprise because Donna Vivino, welcome, Donna Hi. Vivino, Broadway. Jersey girl. Jersey girl. <laughs> in the Jersey. House. We've already like connected. We already have like our moment. <laughs> of being so girly and Italian together. Girly and <laughs> Italian. I know. Right. But Donna Vivino, uh, Broadway, you know, no, I, I, I don't want to say just known for Cosette because you've done so much more, but for me. For you, I was, for, right? Yes. Cosette on. You just told me that story. I know, on the Broadway, and, uh, but you, your career has just like taken off and you're doing all these amazing things. So Donna was going to call in today and then I get a little note yesterday. Like she kind of wants to come in. I was like, that's kind of cool. Yeah, because I, I'm not, <laughs> I, I, I'll go back to, um, to uh, Pennsylvania in, a, in like an hour or two, but I was happen to be up in the New York area, so I'm like, I'll come into the studio. Oh my god, it's so, so fun! Better. Yeah, so we got so excited because Lauren actually sent me a message. She's like, she's coming in. I was like, what? <laughs> we get like, so Yay. excited when we like visitors. <laughs> we do like, and it was funny. I texted you. I texted Kevin. I think it was like Donna's coming in. Right, Donna's coming in. I, I was like doing something, but Donna's doing next to normal at Bristol Riverside mm -hmm. in PA. Yes, it's in Bucks County, so it's right over the Delaware from Jersey. So beautiful area. A, beautiful Beautiful right, area, yeah. real quick trip. So. Nice light show. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, really, yeah. not heavy at all. Not uh, heavy, but uh, great next music. To normal. Mm -hmm. So you're singing your face off. I am. What is that like singing that music? I mean, you guys are on Wednesday through Sunday. Correct. We have two on Wednesday, two on Saturday, um, and matinee on Sunday, and then evening shows. You know, the other days. Um, it. It's a, it's, the show is, I mean, everybody's singing their faces off. It's yeah. one of those, there's only six of us in the cast, so everyone's singing a lot. Um, I, it is, it's a tough show. Yeah. But, but I'm really taking to it. I'm enjoying it quite a bit. And, um, uh, the other, last week was the first time I, I woke up and I'm like, I have an emotional hangover today. Oh, I From bet. the show. I haven't had that experience. Since it's, I think it's taken like a week or two of, of doing it, you know, regularly that I'm like, ooh. Okay, I need I need to like do something light and fluffy right, right, right now, <laughs> you know, watch Family Guy or something. Yeah. <laughs> and like clean your palate, you know. So yeah. I like that you said that because do you want, were you gonna? Say I was that? just gonna say well, I, I saw the Broadway production right. yeah. and I and I'm a huge fan of the album and you play Diana. Yes. Who? Um, why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about Diana and 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 how heavy this role mm -hmm. really is? Diana is a mother and wife who um, is struggling with. Um, uh, b bipolar disorder, um, uh, depression, anxiety, uh, and the whole family, you come to learn, is struggling with grief mm -hmm. and loss mm -hmm. and all of those things. But everyone's a survivor in the show. And I, and you know, you're the one who said, Lauren, you were like, but at the end, isn't it like a little bit uplifting? And, and I think it is cathartic. There is yeah. something at the end that mm -hmm. sort of gives you the sense of like, there's something that she says, you, you don't have to be happy at all to be happy you're alive. Mm -hmm. That's what Diana says at the end of the show. Spoiler alert! <laughs> um, no, but <laughs> no, it's just it's, it's, a, yeah. it's a lyric that she sings, and and I everyone is singing some inspiring stuff. But I I think that's a really great message, actually. <laughs> And do you think that, I mean, this show, how timely, and I know, that, uh, oh my God, I mean, it's, it's not, I don't say it's an older show. I mean, it's new. I it's would about say 10 it's years new. old yeah, now. It opened new. 10 years ago on Broadway, so. Um, I think how timely is it and how important is the dialogue or the music in this show? Because I think it resonates with everyone because I think we all have something. Mm-hmm. I think I think that I mean I, the show's not dated at all. Meaning like it's like it, yeah it's, right. it, it, yeah timeless. Yeah, we're using cell phones in the show. I yeah. mean it's, it's timeless. I mean we were using cell phones ten years ago as well. But um, it's it's timeless. I mean I think that it's very human. Mm -hmm. What did someone say? The very our very first preview. Somebody in the audience said this show was good, but it's so real. Mm. And I said, well, okay, yeah, mm. it's it's it is a sort of slice of life. It's a right. slice of a really hard piece of life. But we've all gone through stuff that's hard, right? So I think that it's about you have all these characters and then they're trying to overcome something. And we watch them do that. And there is some there is some humor in it. Um, and just some great songs. I think the music, it's almost entirely sung through. Mm -hmm. You don't, I mean, there are some book scenes, but, but, and dialogue within the songs. But the music is almost always going. And, it, you know, it won the Pulitzer Prize. And, mm -hmm. and Tom Kitt. Um, and Brian Yorkie also won the Tony for best score and 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 lyrics. And I and I think that the music 
if you just get on that train, it will take you there emotionally. Because there's a rock element to it, too. Mm-hmm. So it's, a, it's a, like, some people are like, it's kind of a rock opera. Yeah, yeah. And I said, yeah, it is. So it's you true. were saying your emotional hangover. <laughs> we have been, to- no, and I, no, because this has been the through line with a lot of our interviews with a lot of mm-hmm. actors. How exhausting it is to dive into that part of you, be vulnerable, and let that part out, the anxiety. Sometimes these are things that, I mean, I have anxiety sometimes. I mean, I'm, I'm like pretty open about it. Uh, it does. I don't always live there, but to bring that part of you out and then not live there when the show is over, how do you get back into being Donna? Does, am I making sense? You know it's what I mean? It's very simple. I am in a cast. I love this cast yeah. so much. We laugh. We all yeah. laugh a lot. Even last night at intermission, um, Gary. Um, Lumpkin, who plays Henry, was doing an Instagram takeover for Bristol Riverside. He's like, do some impersonations. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so for me, it's like I actually am able to compartmentalize um, Diana and then and then the rest, thankfully. Mm-hmm. Um, there have been other roles where I haven't been able to do that. Um, but it's just, we just laugh so much as a cast. And I think that's important. Yeah, I, that's I agree. Helping, well, I remember when, um, when Lauren said you were coming on, I was like, ooh. Don, uh, Diane in uh, Diana in Next to Normal. That's 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 heavy. It's so heavy, but Alphaba was heavy too in a weird I was way. Say. Okay. And I have to say that <laughs> there was something about see Alphaba like she spends so much time on stage and nobody wants to even touch her, <laughs> right? Well, and, or right. look at her, and it's really isolating for for. And yes, the show is, is it lighter? Yeah, uh, sort of. I mean, the the book is really dark, but Alphaba is such a hard to sing that when I went into this, I was like. Oh my gosh, Diana's gonna be really hard to sing too. And it's not easy per se, but I just feel like I, I slayed Alphabet, I can do anything, you know? It's there you go. I, like. I kind of like, <laughs> I'm like, uh, you know. But that's a great point though that you yeah. say about how like no one, you know, touches Alpha but really wants anything to do with her. We're in next to normal with Diana. Everyone, she, is, everyone trying is trying to, to help, help her. her. Yeah. Everybody's giving her the attention. Yeah. We're in Wicked. She's like the outcast and nobody wants to give her any attention. So I found it quite isolating um, and much more depressing mm. and lonely. I mean, yes, act two. But no, everyone hates Alphaba. Right. I don't, I don't think people hate Diana. They all want to help her. It's so much attention coming at her. She, I feel like, is trying to get away into her own delusional world, you know? so Well, like her fantasy, Right? Doesn't yeah, she? She has delusions. She has delusions of um, all kinds of stuff. I don't want to give it. Yeah, we don't want to say because you gotta go but see the shop yeah. at Bristol um, Riverside. But sure. So Elphaba. And some of her delusions are funny too. Right. <laughs> well, right. that's what I was gonna say because you did say you mentioned laughing. Oh yeah. And you oh, yeah. know, I kind There's of. A funny doctor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you. I always tell my students when we're when we're doing a dark show or. I go, th- you got to find the humor. Don't go for the obvious. Don't yeah, I, you know you what? Know, it's Maybe hard. we shouldn't call this show a dark show. It's just a, it's a show that deals with subject matters that are, that can be sensitive. That yeah. can be, that can be tough Triggering. For you said triggering. Triggers right. the word. Yeah. yeah, I guess yeah. everyone's using that word nowadays. So it's like, it c- you know, I do have to give trigger warnings to people. Like, I'm just letting you know, it's, you know, it deals with subject matters that are, that are heavy. And it also deals with subject matters that were taboo until I would say maybe the past twelve years. Like mental illness. Right. We never oh, talked about still mental taboo. Illness. I yeah. still think people uh-huh. don't I, I give it too. enough, you know. Yeah. yeah, they're afraid to be like, you know, I go to like a therapist. Who cares? Go to a therapist. It's great yeah. to talk to someone. But you know, back in like, let's say like not that not that my dad's anti therapy, but like his generation. Well he's Italian, right? Yeah. So, so he might like, be. <laughs> let's be honest. <laughs> But like you know, therapy. What do you need right? therapy for? I mean, they used to have. You those had a great rooms, childhood. You know, the ante rooms where they would I put the child. Else, you're fine. You know, eat something. <laughs> eat something. Um, but no, it was something that because you couldn't see the illness or you couldn't see the struggle, mm-hmm. it wasn't like having a broken arm that people sure. just dismiss. And they and you're right, people still feel that way today. I mean, I think I think it definitely a lot of the stigma has been dispelled, right? And that's good, and I hope it continues. That's why I think this is a really important show too. Um, and theater brings people together. Yeah. So it's a way of yeah. learning, teaching, expressing where you're not like necessarily sitting in a classroom. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but you're like sit and having someone talk at you. You're kind of like there with the actors. Right. And when that's this a show experience. first came out ten years ago, teenagers loved it. Yes. It was it was the Dear Evan Hansen. Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. yes. And Dear Evan Hansen is heavy in, in a way right. too, right? Yes. And it's the same director. Michael Graff directed both on Broadway. Um. So he he knows how to do the end mm-hmm. rent with and his. Right, yep. So he knows how to do. Yeah. That. These are these Absolutely. are his kinds of pieces, right? Um. And uh. 
I, I just I just remember like the teenagers were really digging it. So I I find that sometimes the older people that sometimes are like, oh, <laughs> that was really <laughs> heavy. <laughs> Where the teenagers are like, yeah, that was, and you know. Because they're really open. They're very open. They're it's very it's open to about be Gen Z or millennial, but even Gen Z—that's the teenage generation now. It's called Generation Z. <laughs> yes, I'm <laughs> learning all the gens. Um, we, have a, we have a Gen Zer in our cast, little Gary. <laughs> so, um, so, so they—they're really open. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. So they, I did want to bring up you. I'm sorry, Dan. Do you want to say something? Because I was going to bring up Alphaba really yeah. quick. How you were well, like everyone yeah, hates Alphaba. But she's not bad. It's no, so funny how it becomes like this black and white yeah. thinking with her. Well, it's bullying, I, you know. Yeah. And it's, it's she's just she's different. I mean, her skin is green and she's different, but she's also pain in the neck. She's pain in the ass. I mean, that's <laughs> like a, no, but that's something that like that they they were even like you know the top of the show. She, everyone is staring at her and she's tough, so she just is like what? What do you mean? So there's a there's a part of her that's gotten really hard yeah. um, from that and that's why she becomes quote wicked and then she claims that and she's like I am wicked because mm. you guys can all you yeah. know what I mean that's sort of um, she's very Italian isn't she <laughs> but she's I feel like she thinks like, outside whatever. the box she I thinks th outside the box yeah. she's an activist yeah. she she's the only one who's speaking out saying like because you know the whole thing with the animals mm -hmm. and she's like what what is going on and you know I think when that when that book was actually written as well Gregory Maguire sort of said it was she if, if it was Nazi Germany she'd be leading the resistance right. so that's who she is so she's also disliked not just because of the color of her skin but because she is always going against the you know she's go she's swimming upstream always and yeah. she'll also speak up for the little guy um, and then of course they had to put like the love story in and of she course. like takes the man and all that but whatever <laughs> <laughs> which is like well, go, come yeah. on but it's well whatever I guess female you have to yeah Danny had a question so I'm sorry talk yeah. about you know whether you're playing Diana or Alphaba yeah. talk about your process as an actor how do you bring these characters yes. to life <laughs> the realness I love that um, okay with musicals it's uh, you know you do sort of I, I like to listen to the music at first and just let it like kind of wash over me. I, I can't listen too long to the the original people like Adina Menzel, Alice Ripley, both incredible women. But if I listen too long, I'm going to start impersonating mm -hmm. them. I also have an impersonator mm -hmm. ear because it's something that I do. So I'm just like, okay, I can't listen too long. But um, I I allow the music to sort of give me a sense of okay, what is what is because I'm very musical. So I'm like, what is mm -hmm. what is that color? And then I go right to the text. I'm big on the text. And then I really do like to play. Mm. I, I mean, th this rehearsal process was a little shorter than I'm used to. Mm -hmm. um, but that that happens. And luckily, we have a great cast. But I, I love rehearsing. I love rehearsing. And I love to play in a rehearsal room with other actors. And I love to see what they're going to bring and then play off of that. So my, my process, it sort of depends on the on the role. Um, you know, with with this, I, I wanted to get on top of the music before I came in because I knew it was a short rehearsal process. Yeah. So just like getting the lyrics down, but not like memorizing exactly how I'm going to sing and say every word right. and then and then play with it from there. Um, I did a I did some research on bipolar. Um, I, I actually did more research on grief and grieving. Mm. I read a lot of books um, past two months about grief, about loss, um, losing... Um, a family member mm -hmm. and uh, the different ways people have coped or not been able to cope with that. That was more, I was more about, I, I was like, I, I don't want to like, how am I going to play someone bipolar? I'm like, how am I going to play someone that is having trouble coping? Right. That's what I was going after. So that was my process with Dana. With, with Wicked, I, I really think it was like, <laughs> it was all about the music. And um, for me, it was outside in with that. Once mm -hmm. that green went on, I looked in the mirror and I was like, I have my, I, I know exactly like, I can't explain it. It just you're like I'm gonna defy gravity. <laughs> yeah, it really no, it really did help. And like the, and, yeah. and the boots that she wears and the, and the clothes. Yeah. Um, when I I studied I studied in um uh, abroad one semester in college. I didn't actually go to school for theater, but I spent a semester studying Shakespeare in. Oh in, um, wow! Yeah, and I auditioned for this program and um and it was incredible. And it was with Rada and Juilliard and and um, Bada as well. Mm -hmm. um, Lambda, I think, all those you know schools out there, and I had a teacher, and he worked from the outside in on characters, mm -hmm. and that, like, I never thought that way because the American way, you're so like, yeah, you know, yes. and which is which is valid as well, like write in your journal a whole backstory, and like, get, but I don't know, like sometimes it's just like the shoes or the nose, it uh -huh. depends on the character, so. I've never really thrown that away. My, I mean, my alphabet was left-handed. I became really good at, le I, I just made a decision. I'm like, she's left-handed. So when oh, she's writing in the show, wow. she's left-handed. And so, I don't know, even that, which is like different. And, and I had to struggle with that. And I just was like, she's always struggling. So I'm going to learn how to write in my left hand because she writes a lot in the show. 
So that was an outside-in sort of way. Oh, I love that. Yeah. And that's so funny because um, I didn't realize, because I do that with my students, my, my you, young you, students yeah. outside, because you know yeah. you want them to be big and abstract. How old are the students you're working with? I mean, with? my littlest one is six, and my oldest, oh my gosh. Well, and my older yeah. ones are teenagers. Yeah, I love working with the teens. and The, the teens I, I love. I actually love oh. middle school. That's yeah, my yeah. wheelhouse, like honestly. Fourth graders, fourth and fifth graders. I do like Even a little even, older. Yeah. I'm like, give me seventh yeah. and eighth grade when they me are just too. hormonal messes. <laughs> I, bring them to me. I, I just love them. Donna, I'm doing, um, I'm working at a private school, Ken Play mm -hmm. School in Summit, and we're, uh, I'm choreographing Mary Poppins, and all the girls play all the parts, even the males. Great. And, the, and uh, that's my wheelhouse, yeah. is middle school. That's sixth, I seventh, that. eighth graders, where they're just like, they're not quite teenagers yet. They're still, they're like in that in between. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean and I these kids give it their all. I, I have a program that I founded last summer, Journey to Broadway, which yes, is a program yes, in New Jersey. Yeah, mm -hmm. we can talk about it later. But um, <laughs> and, and yeah. we have we have kids eight to eighteen. Oh, I and love my, that. my my business partner, Leia Leia Adler Hakeem, she is unbelievable with the little ones. Like yeah. she, you know, like 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 I can work with them too. But what she can do with fourth fifth grade is like beyond. You yeah, know? it's, great. it's so. But, but we do outside in because I want you to become the tree, and then yeah, she's and then when we get to with the that. older kids, she has them do all kinds inside. of improvisational stuff where they're like, now use your bodies and make a ship, and like yes. they just jump in. They, they just love jump it. in. Yeah. We I do a, we call it inanimate objects. I'm like, okay, you're gonna become a refrigerator. Oh, right? I love no that. people, yeah. no people <laughs> right? are allowed, and they and they and they they, they work together. Like, but <gasps> you get like the buzz, the uh -huh. buzz, they get so yeah, excited, they, they it. love no showing sounds, you. No sounds, no words, just bodies. Yeah, just using your bodies. So let's um, I did want to talk about your web series that you're. Let's talk about that because you're doing it all, Donna. The web you're series that I'm working on right well, now? There's, the it, one that I was in. The submissions well, only. There's submissions only. Submissions and then there's only. Oh, my God, which I was such a huge fan <laughs> of. Yeah. It was so ahead of its time. So, yeah. Just being a web series. Kate Weatherhead, brilliant. Um, so ahead of its time being a web series. And Smash came out at the same time. And I was like, no, that's our show. And we're better. <laughs> yeah. um, just sorry. Sorry, NBC. Hey, you could be. Mm. Listen. Uh, be real. Be I, real. You know, I love, I love, love, love TV. And now I'm, I've been writing a web series. Um, and I want to start shooting it next year. We'll see. Do it. We'll have to raise money, and then I can. <laughs> but, you know, it's true, though, because I remember when I was watching Submissions Only, I think it was before social media. Or it, was it just, like, right at was the, like the, the breakout? Right? Or was it, you know? like, 2013? Yeah. Oh, it was just, like, yeah. Web series weren't really, like... They weren't uh, yeah. really, yeah. It was a, it was just slightly ahead of its time, all of it. Yeah. Um. But it's on Stage Network now. Yeah, so, so. it's on Stage Network, mm -hmm. so you can go, you can go check Santino that out. And Santino Fontana's in it. He plays my boyfriend. He's... <laughs> He's just one of Tony for Tootsie. And Kate Which Weatherhead is closing. Is I'm so sad. What? I did not I, know yeah, that. Yeah, they just yeah, announced January 20th. But I gotta go. Yeah. Well, I gotta go. Uh, I gotta go. It's that theater, that Minskoff is too big for everybody. Uh, <laughs> I just, because I just love that show so I much. love the movie, so... I, I, I had I so love to both. see the show, and I just love the whole concept yeah. of it. I would love to. I just want to. No, I was I actually be shocked that when show. I read the, yeah, me the too. closing. That's, what, that's something I would tour with. Yeah. I would just take my, my four-year-old and be like, come on. Can we talk about touring? Yeah. What is that like? Do you take your your? Cause you well, have I have not toured since okay. I had a child. Okay. I haven't even auditioned for a tour since I had a child. Okay. I'm like, no, I can't. Um, I've done stuff in California, though, like shorter gigs. Yeah, you travel. But like, what is that like doing like a tour? You know, okay, well, you I did. Broadway. I did Hairspray first national tour, mm -hmm. and then I did um, the Wicked tour right. before I came to Broadway with it. So, um, the Hairspray tour was freaking awesome. I was 25 years old and in the ensemble, covering three roles, dancing, and just l living your best living life. My best life. Right? <laughs> the, the tour as Alphaba was much harder. I had to. I lived like a monk, a nun, whatever. I didn't speak outside of the show. I was constantly going to different venues had to contend with different mm. sound systems different climates different beds it was m it was actually quite stressful um touring is alphaba um i i absolutely saw those cities as well but i was constantly doing stuff all by myself mm. i got very good at being all by myself and i got became an expert texter because i was never speaking yeah the show but the hairspray tour was a blast and i anyone out there who winds up going on a national tour do yourself a favor and see these cities and eat your way through the city so there's so <laughs> much good food everywhere I love food. um yeah me too i i used to and i had like I this like food. i had a website that was like a little like bloggy thing on it and every city i would go to i would write like what restaurants i like oh you're oh, so what great. yeah but this was like again ahead of its time yeah. Yeah. I wasn't, there was no like twitter or anything to because right. i think i toured 08 to 2010 like right before so but on my website i would say like oh i love this place in louisville and i'd put things down and like because I just love to like let people know about 
where to go eat. Well, I want to backtrack. You yeah. mentioned being on tour in the ensemble, covering three roles, having a great time. Can we just have a dialogue about how important the ensemble is? And it doesn't matter how many lines oh, you yeah. have. Or if you're in the chorus, it doesn't mean you're a lesser person. This is a shout out for my students. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, it's <laughs> okay. <up. laughs> Even my daughter, she's like, I'm probably just going to be in the ensemble for the show at the high school. I'm like, you're going to have a great time. <laughs> well, that whole, there are no small parts, only small actors. Yeah. Absolutely true. Um, Go see, go see Hades Town. Mm. It's an ensemble piece. Yeah. You'll be like, oh, I mean, yes, there's the quote leads, but that show cannot run without everyone, you know, in that machine. Every right. show is like that. Um, I, I think that also ensemble gets to have the most fun. I, I'm that's convinced. What I say. That you know. Oh yeah, you do all joke. the good songs. My all ensemble the good days were a blast. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not saying don't shoot the moon and want to lead, but you know, it just I feel like we live in this society where it's. Um, it, and it's not necessarily our generation, but I only have five lines. I only have this many lines. Right. They're, yeah, it, they're it, counting. It doesn't decrease, diminish your right. value. Right. Like when I worked with younger performers and like really, I'm talking like when they're seven or eight years yeah. old and you're like, and you're going to play Daddy Warbucks and you're playing, um, you know, Star to Be. And they literally just go through and they're like, they count the um, lines. I only have, <laughs> um, I'm only on two pages, I Donna. Um, yes. And I'm like, okay. But you <laughs> have your whole song in those two yeah. pages, you know. Uh, <laughs> I always say, but you don't know what's in my brain. I got ideas. Oh, Look, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm like, I got my it drives whole me crazy I know, sometimes. I got my See whole now, oh. now that I'm now that I'm getting older and I have a child, I'm like, uh, can I have a role that like you know like Penny Pingleton and hair? Now I'm too old for it now, but like Penny Pingleton and hairspray is the role to have. Go yeah. out there. You don't have to. You're not. You're not Tracy. You don't have to like carry the whole show. Yeah. Go out. Do like two killer numbers. Steal the show. You're done. <laughs> like those are the parts. It's you know? true. Yeah. And there's even on ense featured ensemble stuff where like you know you remember that person. You know. Um, there was, there's, I know, I don't know why I'm thinking of this, but um, it's because of Hairspray, but Marissa Jarrett Winokur, who played yeah. Tracy um, in Hairspray, she was in this movie called American Beauty. And she oh had yes. one mm -hmm. line yes. in it. Oh, God, she was one she, line. I think I she goes, her. You are so busted. Yes. That was the only line. Yes. And it like catapulted her career. One line. She in was movie. she was like the fast food girl. She was the fast food yes, girl. I remember who that Annette Benning pulls up and she's making out with her boyfriend, and there's her husband working the drive through and. She's standing there training him. Right. She's his manager. And he was like, it's my wife. And she goes, you are so busted. And, and it's <laughs> just, and then, you know, she's Tracy Turnblad right. winning a Tony, you know, eventually. So you just never know. That's what I'm saying. You have to do, you have to do your best. And also, like, we're all telling a story. It's storytelling. So mm -hmm. you're only as strong as your weakest link. Yeah. And you don't want to be the weak link. So you better do that part as with as much passion as you would any other. I you know? agree. And I love that you brought up. And that goes to save for the leads, too. You better not act like you're the whole show. Either. Right. Because yeah, you're not. Don't be a diva. You're not. You are also part of the story. You are also a cog in, in the machine. And I always feel that way, too. Like, uh, when someone's like, oh, my God, so-and-so is coming in. Not that I don't get impressed. I definitely am impressed with people that are successful and work hard. But I'm like, but we're all working on the same project together. Right. Aren't we all equal if we're uh, all on the same yes. project together? Yes. That's I'm very strong about. Yes. You know, I don't think I'm better than anyone else. No. When I go into a project at a theater, yep. I'm like, we're all equal here. And Correct. we all have to put this show together yep. and, and make it a great experience for everyone. Absolutely. But yes. I love that you brought up the older you get. I'm the same way. I, I'm, I do this museum immersive theater piece every year for, for the veterans. And you walk through this historic home, and every room has a scene. Oh, cool! And it was, it's very really cool. cool. And I'm, I sell Liberty Bonds, by the way. It's very exciting. But I love my character. <laughs> but when she was like, because I was in like the first part of the, you know, the the incantation. She's yeah, like, which yeah. part do you want? And I looked at all the things, and I was like, this one has less lines. <laughs> <laughs> I just because some of the monologues were it's very, so very long, yes. and I just know with kids and my schedule, I'm like, I just <laughs> can't sit and memorize a three, four page monologue. Yeah. So I'm like, I go. I'm like, less is more. And yeah. I will make that scene you're gonna, work. You're so gonna I love take that those you said lines that. and make it something. I yeah. love that you said that. So let's like, we're going to like rewind a yeah. little bit, go back in time. So 41 years ago. Ah! Oh my oh God. Shit. Oh my God. I'm so Fine. sorry. You know what? I, I accept it. I'm sorry. This is 41. Donna. No, I'm, I actually don't hide my age. So I don't either. Fine. I'm like, I'm 44. But, 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 <laughs> I'm but so you're sorry. Lucky. No, it's fine. I was like, wow. <laughs> okay. Oh God. Yes. I'm so sorry. We could edit that out. But no, we're going to go back in time to little Donna. Oh, little Donna. Little yeah. Don okay. So forty. Okay. So so little Donna, like coming out of my mother's womb. <laughs> yeah. Were you dancing and singing? No. But we'll say like no. Like, I thought we were going to like Les Mis. You that's know, like what eight I meant. Les Mis. Eight year old Donna. <laughs> um. When did you get you the bug? The <laughs> when did you get oh, the bug? I, that's what I said. So it was out of the womb. Like you old. came out dancing yeah. and singing. 
Not because really dancing. Your, I mean, I thought like, I was dancing, but I'm not. I mean, I can, <laughs> I can move pretty well, but I, I, out of respect for my dancer friends, I won't say I was a dancer, but um, singing. My mom said I was... Aggressive movement. My mom said I was say. cooing and singing when I was two, and I was always acting. I was always putting... I mean, I think I, I posted a flashback photo today that... Um, I oh didn't. I didn't oh wear glasses, God. but I always was sort of, you know, oh my in, God. A in a character. <laughs> always. I mean, I didn't need to wear glasses, but I wanted to. Um, um, so, so, like, you knew right away because it runs in your family. Yes. My can we talk about your record? The record? That well, the yes. Let's talk, uh, yes, of course. Hello. So, 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 my 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 dad and his brothers are all um, musicians. My dad and my uncle Jimmy were in the basic cable band, Max Weinberg Seven, back when Max Weinberg was heading mm-hmm. the band for Conan O'Brien. Oh, wow. Twenty six yeah. years. Oh, that yeah. um, they're wonderful, wonderful jazz and blues musicians. Um, that just ended actually last year. So, uh, but they've been doing that. They did that for what is it? Twenty five years, I think. Oh the band gosh. was on. Um, and my uncle Floyd, Floyd Vivino. Yes, it's like a New Jersey like staple. He really is like a. Cult. We used to have one of his shows on um on our station. It was, was it the Italian one? No, no, it was the um gar- the garage sale. Okay, we used to rebroadcast it here because he used to play. Right. Yes, but I know exactly Uncle Floyd. Uncle Floyd <laughs> is my actual uncle. Hello. Hello. I called him Uncle so Floyd. meta. So we had all that, <laughs> and actually, that the first show that I was ever on wasn't the Uncle Floyd show. I was two and a half years old, and I he brought me on and said, oh, this is my niece. Say hi. And then I said, I want to sing and dance. And so I did. <laughs> and so that was it. Um, and I saw myself in the monitor and that was, my mom said that was it. Cause I was just like, how, uh, how do I get in there? Right. Yeah. Like the TV. I wanted to yeah. get in. I didn't understand Jump physics. In. I was like, I yeah. want to get inside that television now. Um, so, um, I have, um, I have two younger brothers and two younger sisters and my brothers are not, um, in showbiz at all, but my sisters are both very, I, very, very successful. Um, my sister Natalia uh, is actually on tour with Wicked now. I love it. She's oh the standby gosh. for Elphaba. Yeah, so, yeah. Cool. So, you know, if you're anywhere in the country, you might catch her going on. Um, and then my other sister, Antonia, is brilliant performer. She just finished doing Zanita in The Music Man I out in LA with that. Adam Pascal, mm-hmm. and she's in the um, Frozen. As young Anna and young Elsa at the Hyperion. That's so, so great. yeah, yeah. So it's pretty cool. And um, in your album DNA, so which, is, which by the way, I DNA, which people don't understand, are our initials. I know. Well, that's in so birth amazing. order: I Donna, know. Natalia, and that's like, pretty seriously, brilliant. That's <laughs> pretty, <laughs> pretty brilliant. My mother actually came up with that idea. Um, and yeah, and your names are all beautiful. Oh yeah, Donna. Yeah. Well, they're very you, Italian. Yeah, right? I love it. Um, I love them. And. Um, and so yeah, DNA and uh, and before that, I did an album called Beautiful Dreamer with my dad, mm-hmm. um, which is uh, it's it was it was amazing. We did that um, in honor of my grandmother who had passed away while I was out there visiting, and so we were like, let's just go in the studio and put some tracks down. And before we knew it, we were making an album. It was all very organic. Uh, and while we were doing that album, I'm like, Dad, I want to do an album with, with the girls. I want to do one with. Um, Italian Antonia and he's like one thing at a time <laughs> but then of course lo and behold here we are um, and I just you know we're, we're all over the uh, Natalia's all over the country I'm east coast and Antonia's west coast yeah. so we have to get us all together to do a show at some point I really want to do Gypsy with them that's my oh dream oh my gosh because yes. everyone's like you're too young for Rose I said no I'm not she no. would be 41 you're right, you're right. Um, so, oh, so, so bad I, no don't f- I'm saying it now 41 okay. right. 41 I'm, like, I'm 44 I'm 41. so older okay. <laughs> so I look I'm great 36. I look great for 41 <laughs> You do. I'm actually going to start telling people. I'm going to be like, I'm 55. <laughs> and then they're going to be like, wow, you look amazing. You look amazing. That's my new tactic. Well, that's why I tell everyone how old I am, because I think I look good for 44. So I'm like, I'm freaking 44. It's, and then you know what it like, is? Wow. Olive skin, girl. <laughs> it's the Italian in us. <laughs> and a little bit of Jewish. Maybe. I got a little bit uh, yeah, of Jewish. Yeah, you're a little Jewish. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. So, um, no, I, I could see you rocking. As I want to play with Mama Rose, but I want my sister Natalia to play Louise and the youngest one to play. Dan. I would totally oh come into that. Somebody produce it, please. Can we get a GoFundMe right now? It's right. a great right idea. Right now, <laughs> uh, right now, I'm doing it. Right now, there is a director. GoFundMe. There is a director interested. Um, oh, but yeah. But the the issue is that when and how with with our schedules. But we're just gonna have to. You like make it work. Yeah, you exactly. make it work. You make it work. You just it works put it out there. I've been putting this out there since 2013. You're manifesting. It was, well, I, maybe I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It just uh, it was a. Uh, it was. I remember we were <laughs> I was in my dad's house in L.A. Me and my sisters were in the hot tub hanging out, and t- I was like, "What show could the three of us do together?" This is six years ago. Yeah. So there, and, and Antonia, who's just like, she's like gypsy. Like she just that's her <laughs> gypsy. You know, yeah. the baby. She just knows. She's like gypsy. Duh. 
I was like, oh, yeah. You guys should. That would be Duh. amazing. I know. That would know. be amazing. It'd be amazing. You need to but do this like album is so cool. We do the you work and get it. Skylar sister. Okay, so you can go to CD Baby. Oh, gosh. You know, this is this is what I, I know. Don't I should do ask well. like a gotcha question. Where can you this get your what CD? I don't do well. Okay. If you go to my Instagram, I have a link right there, which is great. Right. Um, and then, um, which is CD Baby. I think Spotify has it. But if you would like to purchase a copy, um, CD Baby, you can get Beautiful Dreamer, which is my other album on Amazon and iTunes. Um, and I don't know if we're on iTunes, if DNA is on iTunes or Amazon. I don't know. But I do know that we have um, CD Baby. And then Ghost, uh, that we're, we're self produced on DNA mm -hmm. and Ghost Light. Or are we, yeah, and Ghost Light Records um, did uh, Beautiful Dreamer. So tell us what's on the album, because I, I do know that there's a Skylar Sisters. <coughs> you guys yeah, Skylar Ooh. Sisters. Yeah. Um, uh, there's some original stuff that Natalia's written, which is beautiful. Um, there's a great song by uh, New Jersey Farallon guy, Tony winner, Larry Hawkman. Oh, he's Larry. been on our show. Oh. Larry's amazing. We love, I love Larry. Larry. I was supposed to do a concert with Larry a couple weeks ago, but I just couldn't with the, I was like, oh yeah, I'll do it on my day off. And then it was for New Jersey Theater Alliance. Yeah, oh, I, I was act actually on the committee for that. So I, I had remember. to pull yeah. out. Because I, I was like, Larry, I'm, I'm doing Diana and I'm exhausted. I remember yeah. he mentioned that and I was like, and oh yeah. And I also, yeah. I was so <laughs> sick when we started this first rehearsal yeah. process. I started with bronchitis. So the whole first week of rehearsal, and it's a two and a half week rehearsal. Oh yeah, so, so you're so like. So the whole first week I, I had my bronchitis and I called Larry. I said, I know we're three, three or four weeks out but i'm gonna bail now and which i never like to do but you know what it was the best thing. yeah no, you, listen i've been off more than i could chew right yes and sometimes we say yes and then we're like oh what do we do i Not know you don't want to do it usually right. usually <laughs> i can keep going but when i was i was sick and i'm like what if i'm like still recovering and that um, shows the and next and to normal is demanding yeah. it is pretty demanding it's very demanding but larry's great we love larry larry's great so he wrote a song on there um and uh what else did we do oh gosh there's like goody goody there's some of the old oh, stuff nice. um i do a song that maury yeston wrote called three days which did not make it into titanic but uh but is gorgeous um and then uh what else oh well hello live to tell i cover because oh, i i love yeah. madonna me too. Yes. I love Madonna. First of all, I have no shame in my love for Madonna. I I love. I love Madonna. Beginning. I love Live to Tell. The whole Me Too thing happened too. I always do Live to Tell at all my gigs, all my concerts. Um, but the and I did the vocal arrangements on that. But when the whole Me Too movement happened, it was when we were putting the album together, and I'm doing Live to Tell, and like someone's like, "Whoa, this is literally like appropriate for today." I'm like, "Sure, I sure. guess so." You're I, like, I, I, just I love Madonna, and I'm like, "But I just love Madonna." <laughs> <laughs> but yes, you know. Sure. I rock on. Like, so wait, what? Well, like, what is your anthem song? Like, I will tell you when I wake up in the morning, he knows what my song is, Despacito. I know I'm crazy. <laughs> I love Justin, but that's like my get ready to go in the morning. I do like a little shimmy, <laughs> do my mantras. Despa. I don't know what I'm saying, Gosh, but I just I wish it. I said I had an anthem song, but I don't. I don't either. I don't, so. I don't <laughs> listen to a ton of music, as weird as that sounds. Yeah. I no, know. because you, I think. I listen to podcasts all mm. the time. I've started doing that more. I love to listen to just the sound of voices talking to yes. me. <laughs> it's just. Very soothing. Um, I mean, sometimes I'll get into some music, but I do like Tupac. <laughs> I yes. Listened. Oh my! Did you like hologram Tupac or did that freak you out? I, I remember? No, that? I don't no. really no. like that. No, I like no old school Tupac. Yeah. Like, like, okay. I love. Like, there was a period of time where I was listening to Tupac, Eminem, and Jason Robert Brown, and there was no middle ground. I want to see. I, I want to see Jason Robert Eminem. Brown and Eminem do a show at Subculture. I love Eminem personally. Like, I think Eminem's awesome. Yeah. I mean, he is disgusting, and then some of the things he oh was saying God. back in the oh, day. Oh yeah. Perfect. But yeah. I actually think he's an amazing. He's a good amazing rapper. Rapper. Yeah. He's amazing. Um, love Eminem. Love Jason Robert Brown. Bridges of Madison County, stunning. Yeah. And then um, the Beatles. I mean, who doesn't love the Beatles? Exactly. Beatles. Classic. Kevin, do you, I mean. Kevin. And Fab yeah. Foe is my uncle. That's Fab Foe. Oh, Jimmy Vivino. If you guys yes. are Beatles fans, you should go check them out too. I feel like, you you, like I feel like your family needs to do like a show. We so sure. Like, a real. I like mean, I hate to say reality show, but like, oh, yeah. But even like, I was thinking like a like a, you're also a Vivino Christmas or something. No, my, you know, my, like my dad <laughs> has been trying to put something together for so long. But do the it, problem dad. is, it's impossible to get everyone together. In I one know. Place. I know. I don't know. Are you the only one in Jersey right now? No, Floyd's here cool. and. And me. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. oh, yeah, you're all yeah. over the country. We're all, all over the place. I think that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. So now you're so you're developing a web series. What else do you have going on? Uh, lots of concerts. I do. Um, I actually have a solo show. I've done. I've done <clears throat> many of so many solo shows in, in New York City. But I I have a solo show that I do on um, Disney cruises. Actually. Ooh. Yeah. Where I do a lot of impersonations and it's comedy based. So because <gasps> I have a whole comedy thing. Cool. I worked at Martin Short. Um, oh, so just like I work at Martin Short. I'm funny. Done. Done. No, 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 no. I, I love, love comedy more than anything. Um, I love it more than anything. 
I love improv more than anything. Well, because um, you studied with Upright Citizens Brigade. You yeah, studied with all these. Yeah, but before that, I studied with Chicago City Limits, which is Second City. Yeah, oh. and they, they came. This awesome. guy came over, and that's where yes. I was an intern. I just, I listen. I, I UCB is awesome. It taught me a lot about sketch, um, but I I'm uh, at heart uh, into character work and and short form. Um, but I understand the long form UCB. It's great stuff if you want to learn how to write sketches. But um, yeah, I just I, I, there's I miss improv. I miss. I mean, I teach it sometimes. I have classes that I do. So yes, what yeah. what am I doing now? I have Journey to Broadway, yep. which is a one week. I know it sounds crazy, but it's a one week summer program. It's audition. We had a most amazing group of kids last summer. We had seventy five kids, ages eight to eighteen. Um, they got to do a, a showcase in New York City. They, it, it was it was outstanding. If you guys are interested, go to journeytobroadway.com. Check it out. We're going to be posting audition info, which is going to happen in January. Okay. We have auditions coming up. Um, and you can go to our Instagram as well and look at some of the pictures. We had Donna Murphy teaching. Annalie nice. Ashford was there. Ooh. We had some great people. Oh, I could see you guys play, like, playing sisters. Oh, cool. I love Annalie. She's, uh, she's great. She's hilarious. She's hilarious. And she's a good person. I like to work with nice, great yes, people who be are nice. positive. Um, and so uh, it was so funny because like Donna Murphy comes in and she's working with these teenagers and yeah. they're like, cool. And all the little ones are freaking out in the other room and they're like, wait, we're not working with, she was teaching, she was doing a course, um, a master class in pre-1965 um, musical theater songs, which is just stunning because yeah. all of you guys need to learn how to that's sing the old stuff too. Yes, yeah, that's amazing. please. This yes, that was part of my that. curriculum. Please. Well, I made them. I said, you're all coming in with 16, 16 to 32 bars of that. And all the little ones are going, it, it's Mother it's Mother Gothel from <laughs> Tangled in the other room. It's Mother Gothel. And I'm literally like, oh, did I do this wrong? No, no, no. no. <laughs> yeah. So... Um, so I have that, and then I'm I'm singing with the um, uh, symphony in Nova Scotia in March. <gasps> I have I'm going to be on the Disney Wonder in January Jeez. doing my one woman show. Um, I'm actually um, musical directing a, a youth production of uh, I think it's going to be Frozen. I'm not sure. They're they're going to let me know soon. But I do that I do that in Fairlawn. I go to my hometown and yeah. I work with um, the drama club there. It's really fun. I love that. Yeah, love when when I'm you. free and I can do it, I love to do it. And they. Um, and it's my business partner running it, and she does such a great job. Um, and so, yeah, that's that. And I really want to um, – I would love to – now that I've been doing this show, though, I'm missing being in a run of a show, mm. and I'm, like, yeah. ready now. I'm like, you know, my son's in preschool. He's yeah. going to be four. I feel very ready to just do a um, an eight-show-a-week grind, but it won't feel like a grind because it's, like, it's so exciting. Right. So I, w I would love to be back on Broadway again soon. I have – I have my list of like dream roles, so I'm ready. To what go. are they? Well, I want to play Mary Jane and Jagged Little Pill. Oh, I, uh, I auditioned for that show, and mm. I and so I I had oh, a most amazing. It was it was a Love huge it yeah. It was a big process, and I I remember getting like to like that final audition, and um I, I want to play that role, and I will because I have to. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love Tootsie. I want to play Sandy and Tootsie because yeah. how fun is that? Yeah, yes. but I, it's closing now, so maybe the little tour. Tour. I don't know. Eh, yeah, we'll see. Regional something. Yeah, yeah, and then um. Uh, Dear Evan Hansen, mm -hmm. I'd love to play Heidi Hansen. It's so funny. I didn't have like any dream roles for five years, and now like I've hit, you know, this age yeah. or bracket where I'm like, oh, I want to do this, and I want to do this, and, like that. and I want to do Lost in Yonkers. I want to do Bella and Lost in Yonkers. But there's so much, there's so much. I want to do it. I want to just work. Do it all. Yeah. Do it all. And you're I, creating your own work, which is amazing. Too. I am. Journey I've started to do you know? that Journey to Broadway, and yeah. then also, um, I was, I was, I. I been working on a play, but I'm I really put most of my writing efforts into this web series and um now I have to sort of, you know, just film it. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you because I'm I'm in like the development. I have a web series that Kevin knows about it. Danny knows about yeah. it. I haven't written it yet. It's like here. I just yeah. Just I'm holding down. myself yeah. back about sure. getting it down on paper. I understand. You know, but I just have to do it. But I love that you mentioned being in this age graphic bracket because it's funny because um, Kevin had said to me I had interviewed an artist. He goes, "Oh, are you jealous of you know him that he's getting all these movies and he's like 20?" And I was like, "No, because when I was 20, I was not." in the same confidence space that I am now at 44. Right. Exactly. So I'm happier now where I am in my life. And you know what? I play moms all the time, mm -hmm. but that's okay. I'm a mom. That's fine. I, I'm totally fine with that. Um, I feel that, yeah, I, I'm kind of with you. I feel that I've shed that part. Like people are like, if you can go back in time, would you? I'm like, nope. I would never go back in time unless I could take with what I know now. But if I had to erase my knowledge of what I've gained, to go back to be in my 20s, I don't think I would do it. I I liked her. I like myself better mm -hmm. now. 
You I know? think I would have to agree with that. You know? I think I like myself better now, too. Yeah. But Although, yeah, I liked her, too. Yeah, I liked her. In her 20s. <laughs> yeah. I had a blast. Had yeah, fun. she was fine. She was fun. It was fun, like, <laughs> figuring herself out. I missed my waistline then. But oh, God. That. Please. <laughs> I got stretch mark. I'm like... I, you know, it's like my husband, like, I'll sit and look at the mirror, and he's like, every night. I'm like, I know. I'm like, I'm just like, it's not because I'm like, look at me, I'm so sexy. I'm like, look at me, I've had children. And no, this is you gotta embrace your yeah. body. And, and I'm love like, it. you know what? I'm gonna do No dance. matter what anyone says to you. No, and like, we bought these like LED lights for our room, so he'll put on these like disco <laughs> lights. Okay. And I'll put on my desk. TMI. <laughs> Well, they're for so our lamps. <laughs> I mean, they're light bulbs. Help me. And right? I'll just be there like, sorry, I'm like, give it away. I'm teasing you. But I'll be like dancing <laughs> in the room. And I'm kind of like, you know what? Yes, I was thinner back then. I was more toned. Ah, I was dancing true. every day. But then Cheers. I was like, but I still like myself better now. Listen, it's, you know? it's, it's I, I love what's happening with young people today with self-acceptance. Me too. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's great. Me too. And I Not think hashtag me too, just <laughs> me too. Yeah, just the regular me just too. Just the regular me too. Just the regular just me too. The regular but one. No, yeah. I feel, but I feel like that's because of us. Because not you and me, but maybe you and me. Maybe but we like, paved yeah, the maybe way. Yeah. Yeah. But like our generation, don't you think paving the way? I, I mean, hope so. I like to think that because you oh, have I a young... You know, yeah, well, yeah. My kid. Well, what I love about my son is he'll be like, "Mommy, put your phone down." He says that to me. Oh, my kids! I'm like, "Ooh, this is good." So, like, the little little ones now are really not into the phones. Yeah, they don't yeah. because they're sick of seeing this. Right. So like, put your phone down. Oh. And I've been pretty good about it too. I have to admit, I kids. read books you now. Kid, I have four. Oh my goodness, <laughs> right. I, honey, you look unreal. Right. Well, <laughs> my first is my stepson, but I've known him since he's That's been a baby. Child. So he's mine. Absolutely. He's my guy. But yeah. he's 23. 24 and then i have a third a 14 year old an 11 year old and a nine year old and they're my they're my squad mm. i will admit that's what she was doing in her 20s i was having babies <laughs> i was pregnant all the time i mean by the time i had my last one i was just like hey <laughs> Yeah, See, I, I did it later because my son is going to be four at the end of January. Yeah, but so you know what? Like, yeah. People, you know what? I just kind of happened to like get pregnant. Got it. Um, but like my husband, like we were like, hey, we're having a baby. And then it just kind of kept on going. But uh -huh. I always, I, I think there's nothing wrong with waiting later, mm -hmm. to be honest. Because yeah. I remember. I don't even think I was waiting. It was just like, okay, was like, hey. okay now I'll do this. <laughs> now I'm going to, but you know what? <laughs> he's your little legacy. Oh, he's amazing. And he's yeah. like, you know, it was hard for me though. Uh, I had terrible postpartum depression with my first I child. Had, um, you know what? I'm glad you're talking about that because I had um, I had really bad antenatal depression, which is when you're depressed during the pregnancy. I had that oh with my last one. Um, so so they were really mm -hmm. worried about, and so I'm, I try to tap into that for Diana too. Like I was going to say, yeah. I mean, I remember feeling this is good. This is really really um, personal, but I'm going to talk about it because I've wanted to talk about this more. Um, but I I remember feeling uh, this is really dark, but I was like, mm -hmm. I really don't I. I don't want this child to be harmed, and I love him, but if I somehow died during childbirth, he'd be better off without me. Like, that's how dark yeah. mm -hmm. my thoughts were. I, it was like, I don't care if I die in childbirth. What? Yeah, yeah. So when you go there and go that dark, and that it was totally chemical. It really was. It or is. whatever, hormonal. That's mm -hmm. the word, hormonal. Um, and so they were, they, were, they were definitely, like, monitoring me because they're like, you're going to have, you could, you, you're really at risk for postpartum. Yeah. But right. then, you know, he came out, and I was like, ah! Like, I was yeah. fine. Yeah, was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah, the yeah. actual pregnancy. Right. So I was not a very good pregnant woman. That's okay. I hated it. And, and it didn't hit me. Yeah. It did not hit me either until like third trimester. That's the other thing. Yeah. I was actually fine for six months. And then suddenly I was like this wave of depression came over me. And it was, um, it's just everything gets very dark. And you, and and you, you start to there's see no tunnel. color. Right. Yeah. There's yeah, no yeah. color. And yep. there's like clouds. It was scary no and it's weird how it comes out sorry danny we're talking and, no, and there's shame in it yeah. because you feel like you're supposed to be this like happy glowing mom to be and i didn't feel that at all well that's what i was gonna I was say like, it's it's good that you're talking about it because i think people just assume like you're pregnant happy everything's great yeah, no. well i you was know? very open when i had my first daughter i i couldn't believe i i was ill during the whole pregnancy i mean yeah. vomiting nonstop. they had to medicate me for that i was lucky i didn't have that oh it was awful and then i had her and i'll never forget we're, we're coming home from the hospital i'm walking into the house and i'm like this feels strange who like i felt like like invasion of the body snatchers and then i had anxiety and then uh. the depression case, i would cry everything that you imagine i had uh -huh. i would have these nightmares that we'd be at the beach i'd be holding my baby and the waves would just come out and like grab her i a i was nursing so i was putting i put a lot of pressure on myself i ended up nursing all my kids but um she was up all the time nursing mm. um they actually had to medicate me 
So I was on Zoloft for a really That's long what time. Do, yeah. Yeah. Um, I was hiding it from everyone. So oh, I, I told everyone. Medicated. So I wouldn't, I told yeah, everyone. no, I was hiding it. I felt like so ashamed about it until until my doctor picked up on it. Like when I, when he was like almost due. It was like yeah. two weeks. Was I was like, due two weeks later. And he, he's like, oh, you have to take this, this questionnaire. And then he's like, you just scored extremely high on antenatal postpartum. And I was like, oh, really? Uh, I was just, I was just like, uh-huh. Yeah. You were flat. You feel flat. just kind of like despondent. Yeah. yeah. So uh, people would say to me, oh, your baby, how do you like it? And I was honestly, I was very much like, I actually am hating it. I'm really miserable and I wish I didn't do it. Of course, now that she's 14, I love her so much and it's like <laughs> crazy. And I, But I'm open about it. It was hormonal. I had to have an emergency C-section. Yeah. So I was pushing and pushing for hours. Yeah. And all of a sudden they were like, baby's in distress. And it, then it got crazy. Then they wheel me into the operating room. They cut out this baby. And then I'm like recovering. And then they're like, here's your baby. Go home. Have a, you know. You know, one of the know? things I've always wanted to do is I want to do a podcast called, or whatever. I mean, po yeah, podcast. And I wanted to call it Mums the Word. Oh. Because, and I want it to be about this kind of stuff. I want everybody to talk about the things that they don't Let's talk do about. Let's do it. Well, about. you want to do it with me? I'll do it with you. I've been looking for like. I will do it with you. Because I got, let me tell you something. Let's start a show called Let's Mums do the it. Word. Let's I really, do it. I'm very passionate about it. Like, I mean, I. I want everyone to come on who, I, I, and it's like the taboo stuff. Like we're going right. to talk about all of it. So. Yeah, I mean, even like momming. I've even like I'm not your typical like mom. I'm like, I'm like the mom and like, and my name is Alice, who comes in with like the Entenmann's cookies. Like I'm not. I've tried. I'm just Andy. My name is Alice. <laughs> oh, are you? I'm like that. No, mom. There's nothing wrong with Entenmann's cookies. No, and, I blew, <laughs> and even my therapist was like, when I was in therapy time, she was like, "There's all different types of moms." Because I felt like I'm like I have to be like the mom that's going to be crafting and making all the little yeah. things. And I'm like that just. Same way. Um, I, like, Let's talk about know. that. We're gonna but do I, that. But I think show. too, Let's like, do our show together. I, I, I love, love that it. idea. But I plus, I get to come to Putin all the time and eat good Mexican. Yes, food. we'll go out to, and we'll get coffee. I should have brought you a coffee, Donna. That's I'm okay. so sorry. It's kind of like even like nowadays with parenting, and and you hear about parents that are like, I have to go run and do this for my kid or whatever. And I'm like, I remember when I was that age. Yeah. My parents were working. I mean, yeah. they couldn't be at everything, and it was like, I didn't I go to back to I didn't go to back to school night. Any of my kids back to school night. I forgot about the one, and then I was like, I don't want to go to these two. Oh being <laughs> being a being a being a performer and having a kid is an interesting thing yeah. too, because you think about like, I, I want to be able to make graduations and right. birthdays and all these things, and it's you know that that mm -hmm. sort of becomes a and you know so. Yeah, but it's the performers in your it's it's in your gut. It's yeah, in you, I mean so I like always understood if my yeah. dad wasn't at something, but right. my you kids know. Get it. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. I think they can. They it's you have to have a partner that gets it. That's the other thing, you know. And I think that 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 um, you know, as long as like the whole family's on the same page, then you're mm -hmm. good. You're good to go. Right. I totally agree. And yeah. I know you have to go because I know you. you I do. I have to get to. I'm so sad. I mean, but we're gonna do a podcast. <laughs> so keep your eyes out <laughs> yes. for months. The words on a little quick though before you yeah, go yeah, though, because yeah, yeah. you had mentioned impressions. Oh yeah. yeah oh. Yeah. So I mean, could well, you if just you go to Instagram? <laughs> there's a whole bunch of them on there from last night. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that, that Gary made me do. Um, but like, who's your favorite to? I mean, I love doing so many. There's so many that I like to do. But I am, um, I'm impressed with that because I can't do impressions. I love when people can do an impression. I'm like he oh, had me so doing cool. songs from uh, Next to Normal last night as different um, celebrities. So ah. like, of course I was like, you don't know, you don't know. Ah. I should like to die alive. <laughs> I was doing a little Celine, and then I I used my big thing for a while. I was I did when when Sex and the City was huge. I did this Sarah Jessica Parker, and it was kind of cool because and Renee Zellweger too when they were like real hot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 And Sarah, I'd be like, thank you so much. I'm so so oh my so God. honored to be here. You know that oh whole, whole thing. You're amazing. Oh I'm my okay. God, you're okay. I'm okay. You're fine. I'm all right. <laughs> um, and so and then <laughs> lately though, I'm like, okay, well, who's the? I'm like, oh, I, I've been trying to. I'm doing that Ariana Grande. <laughs> oh, like, that's all the kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. like, she's good. Though, she has a great yeah. <laughs> I can't, I can't understand her sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> that's my yeah, the, you, that's exactly it. You that's can't understand what she's not saying. Not a confident to be found. No. But she does have a nice voice. And she's good at impressions too. Like yeah. she but not as good as Donna. She's she's good. She's, she's, okay. she's <laughs> she, no, you know what she does? She can just sing all the divas because she has those notes. So like yeah. for Whitney, yeah. when I heard it, I was like, that's not really Whitney, but way to hit those notes, girl. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Oh um, my god. So Yay, that was fun. I was kinda hoping I'm you would glad do that. You <laughs> 
Yeah, I was like, I have to ask her before she no, leaves. Always cut me off, And Danny, the Fran because... Drescher, that was the big one. Oh, do Fran. Well, Fran is when I did the, you know, when she was, and I, I got to do, uh, there's a song, there's a show that I did called Stars of David, which was about Jewish celebrities. Yeah. <laughs> Stars of David. <laughs> yeah. I actually did it at PTC in Philadelphia, and then we brought it to New York. Um, and there was a song called Just Be Who You Are that I did as Fran Drescher, and it was like, just be who you are. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know. But that, you know, the older crowd likes her. Of course. But yeah, so um, go get DNA. Uh, yes, go um, get DNA. Go see Next album. to Normal. Go see Next to Normal. Close to the 24th. Yes. Awesome. Come check out journeytobroadway.com. Yeah. Um, and Where can they follow you? Where can they find oh, you, of Donna? Course. At Donna Bavino on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram, please. And I'm also on Twitter, but I, I, I tend to do Instagram the most these days. Um, and of course, there's Facebook, but I, I, I don't accept everybody as my friend. I'm sorry. I have to <laughs> kind of, I have to kind of know you. You got to vet. So, so really, just Instagram's the place awesome. to find me. And if you message me, I'll message you back eventually on Instagram. No, because so. I messaged you on Insta. I was like, hey, I want to interview. You were like, hey. And then I sent you my hey. email. Go. Then I got it going so, down. Now yeah. I got your number. Instagram's the best place to find me. Um, Twitter, every now and then, I'll put a little sassy comment up there but instagram's the That's place to go for. i'm so glad <laughs> we did this is. this is like for me a child i i still just remember being in fair lawn visiting with friends and them telling my mom oh the girl from town is in lay mid <laughs> yeah, i remember hearing castle on a cloud so for me this is like Aww, an, it's like a nostalgic so sweet. <laughs> yeah. Hugs and i know and now we're friends yeah and, we're <laughs> we're friends. and honestly together. You can come back at any time, but if you, you we can do something on here. Yeah, maybe we'll maybe maybe we'll do a show right on here. Yeah, why Mom's not? Mom's the word. Mom's the word. We got the studio. This is a great studio. We by got the, the way. board. Not we're far we're from we're home. So cool. <laughs> I love Booten. I love this town. Oh, we'll it's yeah. such a secret, like little unbelievable. It really is such a secret. It is yeah, unbelievable. I actually don't want to tell people about it because it's so great. <laughs> we want to keep great out food. All the you can you can have like a like this cool little house and then walk everywhere. Hello. Yes. You yes. Went, where else in New Jersey? You gotta go to Booten Coffee. Booten Coffee. I mean, it's it's. There's something about it. It's just really cool. Donna, we Pittsburgh. live. <laughs> we bought a Victorian, and Ugh. it's 1840 that we are renovating and living in it. I'm literally the <laughs> for a horror story. <laughs> I, I want to move in. Talk about it. Italian. I was like, did I, you I, burn I, the sage? I didn't. You know, got to burn the sage. with crystals, and she was like <laughs> doing all these things, and she was like, <laughs> Do you know how your I house found out about clean. this town? So, so, um, <laughs> so back in July. I had to do. I was going. I was going on the Disney Wonder, and my show was going to be on July 4th. Yeah. And so there's a. I sang on David Letterman, at, dressed as a Statue of Liberty, when I was seven years old. I won this Little Miss Liberty contest. Yes. So I show a video of that before my show, and then I and then I come out and perform. And I was like, No, no, no! It's Fourth of July. I'm going to come out in a full adult costume right. as Liberty, and I'm going to sing. I won't grow up. Right. Get it? Ha ha. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. Where am I going to find it? So I'm calling all over, and finally, there's this woman here. And costume show. Yeah, it's still so, there. Oh, it's still there. And she is a character. Oh, yeah, she but is. But I came here and then I was like, oh, this not only are there great costumes, this town is really freaking cool. <laughs> yes. Well, this is where I wanted base. You got to go visit series. Anne. <laughs> yeah. Anne. We should definitely collaborate. You're like, yeah. yeah. I have a, some, uh, Anne is. Anne is, is, I, Anne is a character. I mean, she's a character on here. Oh, you have to walk by the shop. It's, it's, it's fun. It's unbelievable. You walk in, though, and you're like, oh, my God, like, how is she going to find anything? And she does. <laughs> she knows where it is. And she even says to me, because I come in, I'm like, so I need, I need Lady Liberty. She goes, you don't have to tell me what you need it for. I've heard the craziest things. Oh, I'm my like, God. Okay. <laughs> she goes, she goes, let me show you. She goes, I people come in. They want to get married in full fur suits. I'm like, what? what? She's yeah. like, yeah. They want to get married with rabbit heads. I was like, okay. Like, I don't even, TMI. She's you know? like, a, I, I'm not a furry. On and on. She's a character on her. <laughs> She's like, but I, sometimes I tell people, like, you sure you want to be Catwoman when you walk down the aisle? She, I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, uh, she is a character. She, and she's still here. She's, she's still, still here. here. She's still here. She is still it's here. It's just pieces of paper everywhere, writing stuff down. That's it's so oh funny. Yeah, because you're just, like, you're just like a stone's throw away. But she does have to go. She was like, I got to go. Out. To I got to go. Out. That's okay, because Italians, we talk got a show. She has a show we tonight. Talk we <laughs> talk a lot with our hands. I have hands. a show tonight, and I. She's got to go and do her thing, do her thing, thing before you go sing, sing. <laughs> That's tonight. Um, but thank, thank you, Donna, you so for much. coming in. It was, so, was so awesome. Fun. Kevin, you, Kevin's like ignoring me. Hi, I Kev. was trying to get his attention. I don't know if you wanted to ask anything. He just likes to listen. And what do you want to know? He's a listener. He's listening. He likes to observe. And Kevin, you look so familiar to me. Kevin Lynch Maybe from YouTube. Impact. Kevin Lynch from YouTube. He's he's a famous YouTuber. I did. That's where I work. I teach there. That's where uh-huh. I teach. I did do a master class there. It was it was probably yeah. Like the third floor of a dance studio. 
Yep, I remember now. That's why we All know right. Kevin. But he's also from YouTube fame. And Kevin is actually one of my dear friends, and he's one of my biggest supporters. I, I, I say he's, like, low-key my soulmate. We're, like, twins, like, separated somehow. Bonnie and Clyde. We t- yeah, Bonnie and Clyde. <laughs> That's what his mom calls us. We're Bonnie and Clyde uh, together. But we were so happy to have you. I'm so psyched that you came in today. I could literally talk for hours. I know. I'm I feel like, like I made a new don't friend. Go, Donna. I feel like I made a new Come friend. Come back to Putin. Come back. Go to it's, Anne's it's costume It's 25 shop. minutes from me. <laughs> so. I know. And seriously, you can even just come and we can just go grab dinner. I love grab a it. bottle of wine. How is that? There, there's that Mexican place is really highly rated. There's the Chili Willies. There's we like Sezon Latino, which yeah, is, that's I've, I've, the I've one. Had a little bit, yeah. And you bring a little bottle of wine. Great, the atmosphere is like a pizza great parlor, but who American cares? Food here. Um, great. But we yeah, we'll have to do that. But uh, Donna, so go check out Next to Normal. It's running till November 24th. Go get DNA. The Vivino sisters, um, find Donna on Instagram, and this is recorded. We'll let you know when it's up on the YouTube. Thank you, Kevin. Ooh. Thank you, Danny. Thank you, Donna. Thank Peace you, out Donna. next week. I'll be solo, Lomo solo with Justin Sargent.